well the next day after all of those clips that you just got done seeing. Welcome back, by the way. Happy New Year. Hope everyone's holidays were fantastic. Um, my vacation was long, but it was good. But I'm very glad to be back home and can especially, especially to get started on all of the reading that I want to get done this year. I'm actually so excited about this reading year. Um, I probably unrealistically set my goal to 100. I'm going to try for 100 again. I know I can do it. I just tend to do other things instead of reading. But I know I'm capable of reading 100 books in a year if I would just sit down and do it. I read 74 last year. I almost made it to 75, but still didn't quite make it because we were on vacation, so I wasn't reading as much, but anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. Today we're talking about everything that I want to try to read this month in January. Um, and this is, again, for the Brighter Winter Reading Challenge. Um, so I'm just going to go through the stack that I have here and start from the top and go down. And I'll talk about the books and then explain what challenge they are meant to, to fulfill. So let's get started. So this first one, I actually started reading it today because I am behind in reading because I only just started reading today of this month. So I need to get going. But Charlotte's Web, and this is to fulfill the prompt of reading a mid-grade book that is new to you. Yes, I've never read Charlotte's Web. I love the story, I've seen the movies, I know the story, but I've always wanted to read the book and now, now's my chance. So, I already got 15 pages in and like the five minutes of break I had at work and I think it's gonna be a really quick read. I'm gonna hopefully finish this tonight just to go ahead and knock off some of those books um, and some of the challenges since I feel like I'm a little behind. But, um, then the next one, these are actually two of them. So one of the challenges was to read two of the, let me see. So yes, one of the challenges was to read two Caldecott Award picture books. And I don't own any. I see them come through the thrift store a lot, but I didn't want to risk them, you know, not coming through and <laughs> me not being able to read them. So I just went ahead and got these from the library. Um, the one I chose was Chanticleer and the Fox. And then the next one, The Right Word. It doesn't have the Caldecott sticker on it, on this particular book. But this was one of them, I think. I might need to go verify that with the ones doing the challenge. It was listed as a Caldecott book at the library, so I'm hoping this one will work. If not, I have some at, at the store. I did find some that I can just read at work as well. Okay, so then another challenge was to read a medical memoir, um, and I picked up When Breath Becomes Air. Um, I have known about this book for at least two years or so, and I've it's always been on my TBR. I don't, I don't own a copy. This is from the library as well. But I was excited to finally be able to check this off the TBR um, and fulfill a challenge with it. I'm really excited. This is about a doctor who was training to be a neurosurgeon and then he was diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer. Um, so I heard it recommended on a podcast at least two years ago. I don't remember. But it sounded very interesting and so I'm excited to finally get to that one. And then the next one, Julie Klassen's The Innkeeper of Ivy Hill. And this one is to complete the read a book with a green cover prompt and also I'm going to be buddy reading it with Erica and that is another challenge in this grid uh, <laughs> it's to but do a buddy read it has to be another book that you're reading for these challenges so we both just decided we're gonna buddy read and we're gonna go with this one for the green cover so I've not read any Julie Klassen yet so I'm excited I don't know if I like her or not but I hear good things so I'm actually really excited to try her out um, and then the next one is um, The Murder at the Vicarage. So this is the first one of Agatha Christie's Miss Marple series. Um, and this is to fulfill the prompt of reading a book where, where the protagonist is 60 plus years of age. So here we go. I have not read any of the Miss Marple books yet. Um, and I've only read one other Agatha Christie book so far. 
but I enjoyed it and so I'm excited to see what the Miss Marple series are all about. The light is really changing so fast. What is this? I think the lighting is going to be a little different, but we're just going to roll with it. Okay, so then the next one is Wild by Cheryl Stry Stryad? Stryad? Strayed. I don't know. <laughs> um, yes. So this one is going to fulfill the prompt of read a book set during a journey. And so this is just the author's uh, memoir of traveling on the Pacific Crest Trail. And I love hiking. I don't know that it'll, it will ever happen in my life, but I would love to either do the Appalachian Trail or the Pacific Crest Trail or whatever other trails are in the West, you know. You know, someday be a through hiker. I don't know. It's probably not ever going to happen. I'm probably not that ambitious enough to do it, but I love hiking. And so I love reading other people's stories and I've heard about this one. Pretty sure everyone's heard about this one. I don't know, but it's been sitting on my shelf for a while and I'm glad to finally also check it off the TBR list. So most of these, except the ones I picked up from the library, there was four of them. Four, five of them. The two uh, picture books and then When Breath Becomes Air, the Julie Classen book and the Agatha Christie book. Those are all from the library. But it was only because I didn't have books here that would fulfill those prompts. But my goal was to try to make sure that they are all books that I own but have not read yet. Because I'm trying to get through all of the books that I own that I have not read yet. It's a lot. Um, okay, so then the next one is The Martian by Andy Weir. Where? Andy Ware. <laughs> um, so this one is to fulfill a, the prompt for reading a debut novel. Um, this is my husband's book. My husband is obsessed with space. He loves space, especially Mars, and he loves The Martian. <laughs> um, the only thing I know of to be aware going in is that this does have some language in it, which is unfortunate, but I've actually seen the movie. And the movie is actually interesting. I'm not as interested in space as my husband is, but he recommended this one, so I decided to go for it and, you know, try it out. So, there's that one. Okay, so then the next one is... I'm not excited about this one, but it's to fulfill a specific prompt, and it is. I was Dr. How do you say this name? The evil doctor that worked for Hitler. This guy. Mendel. Mendel. So, anyway, it is. I was Dr. Mendel's assistant. Um, so, this is a book that I picked up at the Auschwitz uh, bookstore when I was in Poland. Um, and this is to fulfill a prompt of reading a book on a topic that you're not comfortable with or is outside your comfort zone. I've been avoiding this book. I bought it because, you know... It was one of the top recommended ones. It's a true account of the doctor's assistant and everything he saw the doctor do. And the doctor was evil. Very evil. And all of the experiments that he did on everyone there in the Auschwitz prison camp. All of that stuff. I know it's going to be brutal. It's probably going to wreck my soul. Probably make me nauseous. Sick to my stomach. All of the things. So this is very much out of my comfort zone. But I and I I have been avoiding it, but avoiding it no more because um, it fits that prompt. So we're gonna try to get to it. <laughs> um, okay, so then the next one is Aesop's Fables, and this is to fulfill the prompt of reading a collection of short stories or essays. So. I have read a few of the fables, like there's some pretty popular ones, but I've never read the entire one, um, or read like the entire collection. So I'm going to try to get through this one as well. I could probably read some of these every day just to get through it. So like the key with this challenge that I'm doing is that you have to read the book from cover to cover that you chose unless otherwise specified, like there's one reading a poetry book for 20 minutes. Um, I have not picked out a poetry book for that. I should do that, I forgot. I just remembered. But anyway, we have to read the books cover to cover. We can't DNF it and claim it as a read book for this challenge. So, this is a lot to get through this month, and I don't know that I will actually get to all of them. 
but we're gonna try. Okay, so now we're bringing back Wuthering Heights because this will fulfill two prompts. Um, <laughs> I tried reading this in, was it November, October? Yes, I tried reading this in October, but I just wasn't feeling it and I really didn't get very far into it. Maybe like the first chapter, I'm not really sure actually. But I decided to pick it up again this month because it fulfills two prompts and those are um, reading the last book published by the author as in like sh basically showing the end of her career. Um, this is also the first book she published so I'm assuming she just did this first one, Emily Bronte. But this was recommended by the Brighter Winter Challenge um, admin of being one, a perfect one for this prompt. So I was like, perfect, because I did want to read it. And it will fulfill the other prompt of reading a classic that I should have read before. So there are a lot of classics that I should have read before. This is one of them. And so if I can make it fill two prompts, that's even better, because the more challenges I get done, the more entries I get for the grand prize at the end. I've never won yet. I don't know if I'll win this year, but you know what? Even if I don't win, I always enjoy this challenge and all of the books that I'm introduced through, introduced to through all of these prompts. So I literally cannot word today. Okay, so then <laughs> the last one, um, I think. Oh yes, I need to find the poetry book. So the last one is Counterfeit Kingdom by Holly Pivik and R. Douglas Chibet. Words. Authors' names are a struggle for me. But anyway. So this is The Dangers of New Revelation, New Prophets, and New Age Practices in the Church. I've been very interested in this topic, um, again, because of recommendations from Elisa Childers' podcasts. Um, and this is to fulfill the prompt of reading a book that was published in 2022. So I'm excited to dive into that one for sure as well. Um, I need to find a poetry book. I really don't own that many poetry books, which is sad. I read Longfellow's poetry last time. I thought I had a copy of Emily Dickinson's poems, but I don't know where it is. I don't have it on my shelf, so I must not have gotten it then. But anyway, since I read, apparently the only two poetry books that I own are a collection of Longfellow's poetry and then Whittier, which are two of my favorite poets that I remember from school. Um, so I guess I'm going to go with reading Whittier's poems <clears throat> for the prompt of reading poetry for 20 minutes. And I have to read it for 20 minutes straight, not breaking it up. I don't have to read the entire thing for this prompt, obviously, but that would be a lot to get through. Either way, I'm excited to read Whittier's um, poems. Also. You guys should send me recommendations for um, your favorite poetry books because I want to get into poetry more. It's always been a little bit hard for me to read and try to understand, but I won't learn unless I try reading it some more. So there we go. All right, so we're going to wrap that up. That's it, and that is what I hope to read this month. It's a lot, <clears throat> and I guess you guys will just find out at the end of the month when I do a wrap-up if I've actually completed all of them. There's actually a few other prompts that I will try to, fu try to fulfill with these books um, because you're supposed to use one of the books that you're reading to fulfill these prompts. And the few are, are to read somewhere you don't typically read or pick up a book instead of your phone while waiting or bored, which is a lot. Um, and then, yeah, that's it. So, and then a few other prompts that I won't be using the books for are ask someone what they are reading and share a book quote with a friend. So, this will be fun. I'm really excited to get into this. Um, let me know if any of you guys are joining it, because I know I talked about it in a couple videos back. Maybe it was my last video, and I think maybe one person said they were interested in doing it, but maybe there are more. If anyone else is doing this challenge, I would like to hear about it. It's a lot of fun. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.